from RF Smart. This is On Par, a podcast that delves into the very heart of the healthcare system, its supply chain. And here's your host, Sarah Archer. Hello, welcome back to On Par with RF Smart. My name is Sarah Archer. I'm a member of the marketing team here at RF Smart, and I have joining me today Ricky Jennings from our partner Zebra Technologies. Zebra has been on our other podcast, Taking Inventory, a number of times. They always provide a great thought leadership and industry knowledge. And so today, Ricky is going to do just that here for our healthcare listeners on On Par. Uh, Ricky, can you go ahead and tell us a little bit about yourself and a little bit about about Zebra. Hi, Sarah. Thanks for having me. I'm Ricky Jennings at Zebra Technologies. I'm the Chief Nursing Informatics Officer of our North America Healthcare team and additionally have sales leadership responsibilities. As CNIO, my role is to represent the voice of the clinician at Zebra. I work alongside our customers and our teams to better understand the impact of Uh, technology and specifically our solutions on patient care delivery. I work with our product design and solution design teams as we develop new technologies and enhance our solutions to best meet industry trends and our customer needs. At Zebra, we're a technology solution provider and we understand that health systems need a partner who understands their unique challenges and can help them transform their care delivery and operational workflows. We truly are at the forefront of developing solutions that provide those at the point of care with improved patient identity, mobile collaboration, and real-time intelligence tools. With patient identity, we provide integrated barcode scanning, helping health systems enhance patient care and ensure patient safety through better data and stream delivery. In mobile collaboration, we provide mobility solutions that connect to every platform across the enterprise, enabling better care collaboration, clinical integration, and optimizing care delivery workflows. And additionally, as we look at real-time intelligence in healthcare, we enable critical data to be captured in real time about the location and condition of patients, providers, and workers, as well as assets, all giving insight and contextual awareness for better, uh, more confident decision-making, both in the clinical and non-clinical space. Ricky, we are so excited to have you here today. Of course, Zebra Technologies is always a wonderful partner. We collaborate with you on many different things things across the board. And so it's always fun to have you guys join us. Our topic today, though, what we're going to spend some time talking about is that Zebra recently released a global healthcare vision study. This is, is it an annual study or is it every couple of years that you guys do this? Uh, Our last research study, it was in 2017. And so we do it at, at different points. It's been some years and there's been quite a significant amount of change between that last. Yes. Study. So really excited to talk about priorities today, findings today, and, and comparison to our, our previous study. Yeah, from 2017 to now, there certainly have been a lot of changes here as we're recording this in 2021. And so the survey was conducted with more than 500 senior level hospital leaders within clinical IT and procurement. Ricky, what were the goals of this study? What was Zebra hoping to learn? In facilitating this research study, we were really focused on a singular view. We wanted to better understand their attitudes across these various levels of roles and their priorities regarding the role of technology in healthcare environments on a global scale. Taking a double click there, we wanted to understand the following. We wanted to identify current challenges and areas of concern. We wanted to evaluate device and technology usage across the clinical and non-clinical areas. We wanted to gauge current and planned use of real-time location solutions. We wanted to assess attitudes towards emerging technology trends and what's what is on the forefront. And we also wanted to identify deployment plans and anticipated investment needs in the future. You said yeah. that you were looking to assess technology trends. Who could have predicted the trends that we would see after going through uh, COVID-19 and 2020? And so it's very interesting to hear that you guys are, are thinking to the future in that way. What are some of the trends that were identified? And Ricky, I'm curious if anything in the report surprised you. From a global perspective, in this study, we identified three key areas in findings. First, The pandemic revealed vulnerabilities in healthcare systems, which as hospital leaders, they were already beginning to address 
by implementing technology solutions, but we have certainly seen an augmented focus on those areas. Additionally, technology strategy and connectivity is absolutely being required across all functional areas in healthcare. So thinking every department, whether clinical or non-clinical. And another key trend was that real-time location systems, RTLS, and I think we'll vacillate in this conversation between RTLS and maybe talk RFID, all have immediate benefits for locating medical equipment and supplies, as well as contributing to those long-term advantages for improving hospital workflows. I do want to pause on the RTLS piece and maybe spend some time talking about it because its heightened focus was a standout notable trend to me. Inventory management and asset tracking are absolutely key areas of investment, and they link clinicians to supply chain with a focus on automation and innovation. And that connection between clinical need and supply chain is a standout trend that will probably come up in our dialogue and that we're seeing so much more in this space. In this study, 83% of survey respondents represented their plans to increase investment in supply chain over the next year, so immediately here in the near term. And really, when you think about its benefits here, knowing the location and status of assets, of people and equipment is critical to making smarter in the moment decisions, which we've all become more adaptable to being agile, making quick, meaningful decisions. As IoT accelerates and more sophisticated technologies are implemented at the point of care, key to the success of all of those technologies is being able to bring more visibility to workflows, the functions, how things are being done, where critical workers are running into gaps, and being able to optimize those changes. And I say it time and time again in informatics and technology, there's always a saying about you can't manage what you can't measure. And RTLS location solutions bring information, bottlenecks, gaps, and needed focus areas immediately to the top for better decision making. Truly, that real-time visibility is crucial, especially in hospitals where the stakes are so high and the patient care is so important. Being able to have the things that you need on hand is critical. I loved that you called out that statistic that 83% said that they're planning on implementing some kind of inventory management that, of course, is a trend that we have seen at Smart over the last year. Many hospital systems, healthcare systems who have partnered with us in order to meet those inventory needs. So definitely a trend that we are seeing as well. Another trend that I wanted to call out, Ricky, I read in the report, which, by the way, for those of you listening, if you'd like to read this report, we will make sure that it is linked for you so you can check it out. But a statistic that really stood out to me 89% of executive decision makers and 83% of clinicians agreed real-time intelligence is essential for optimal patient care. However, more than two-thirds of hospital executives still don't feel their organizations are investing enough to maximize staff efficiency and more must be done moving forward. So, Ricky, what is that more that they do moving forward, right? What else can you do? Why is that mobility and real time really the focus? Why is that so important for patient care? We could probably talk about this one all day long and I want to keep it simple because this is why it's so urgent. Quite simply, mobility and real time visibility to where people, assets, and information are is vital to reducing the amount of time our clinicians spend on non-value-added tasks, tasks that take them away from the, their patients, and additionally, reduce the likelihood of a clinician needing to utilize a workaround to complete a task. In today's environment, the clinical environment, it's high stakes, it's high intensity, it involves it, working with care team members that are both physically nearby or interacting virtually and time spent looking for equipment, whether it be something simple, perhaps it's a, a wheelchair or a pump or a scale. All of these things may sound simplistic, but taking time to go and find them or find another clinician who may know where they are keep the clinician from spending time with their patient and completing tasks in a streamlined way. That's the simple piece. 
The second piece of that or the impact to the clinician when if they don't have real-time visibility or have technology in the palm of their hand to be able to go find that device or equipment is the risk in emergent situations, the time spent when uh, a patient is in an urgent situation and the clinicians to provide them care are running about the unit trying to find a critical piece of equipment that's vital in a next step or helping get to diagnosis. Overall, bringing real-time visibility into the palm of a clinician's hand or finding that equipment reduces time spent away from the patient. It reduces the likelihood of overspend in having surplus of different supplies or technologies because of the continued issues of trying to find them. And it also reduces the likelihood of um, staff hoarding or hiding away critical equipment out of a fear or concern that it won't be available for them when they need it. Ricky, it is so funny that you say that as I was sitting here thinking about a team member of mine shared a story of going on site to a hospital where team members were hiding PPE and other equipment in the ceiling tiles of the supply room so that they had what they needed because they just never knew when they were going to get more things. And I think that really last year opened our eyes to these kinds of problems have always existed, shortages and other kinds of issues. However, you never really realize how big a problem is until you are under that pressure and you can kind of see it coming in a, in a critical moment, such as treating patients in the way that we were with COVID-19. A, a theme, though, that appears in this survey a lot is that theme of clinical mobility, like what we were talking about before, being able to have that handheld device, either a handheld mobile scanner or potentially some kind of tablet, even some kind of, of cart with a scanner. How does mobility align with increased patient expectations for that excellent care? That's a great question. And mobility is all about providing connectivity in real time. So mobility is all of the technologies you outlined. It Mobility is vital to connecting clinicians to one another, clinician to clinician. It's vital to connecting clinicians to critical information. So think about connecting a clinician to the EHR, which was really one of the most notable standout reasons for clinical mobility adoption in our original vision study in 2017. It's critical co to connecting clinicians to information about assets, where things are that can help them do their work. Clinical mobility absolutely transforms patient care delivery because it enables the clinician to stay directly with the patient while also communicating patient needs to other team members or various departments in live time. So thinking about patient expectations in today's environment where we're surrounded by information, things in terms that get used often are the on-demand economy. We're expecting things to act quickly, seamlessly, and be delivered in real time just the same for what how the patient is expecting their experience within the healthcare delivery system to be. And so clinical mobility allows clinicians to share patient information, call for help, move the patient through their patient journey more quickly because they're not stopping and restarting, going to find someone else, stepping away from the patient to communicate needs. Actually, one of our patient studies that I reference studies that I Speak too frequently, I think speaks well as one of their clinical leaders talked about their clinical mobility implementation, enabling clinicians to not only know about a patient's need more quickly, but communicate it to someone more efficiently. And that's what it's all about. It's about engaging with the patient, being able to communicate with the patient and others who support them in real time at their bedside, regardless of where care is being delivered. And that has become a pivotal change for us here in today's healthcare environment that care delivery is moving from inside the four walls to outside of the four walls or sometimes in situations being set up in alternative care areas or mobile delivery. The expectation of the patient is that their engagement with clinicians and the clinician's ability to have access to data will be the same regardless of where they're being provided care. And clinical mobility is a key element of that. You know, and when we talk about mobility too, because I think that when I think of mobility, I think immediately a handheld of some kind, a scanner or a smartphone that has been attached to some kind of scanner. But really when we talk about mobility now, 
it really extends into automation. And we, we touched on that a little bit earlier, the automation workflows, but I think we could dig in a little bit deeper because there are some trends that are coming about in hospitals. What are those kinds of trends that you're seeing or predictions for automation within hospital facilities? We're going to see increasing use of automation <laughs> regardless of what industry we're working in and healthcare just the same as we anticipate some of the staffing challenges that are both being experienced today but expected to worsen over time for a variety of reasons both our challenge with staffing but as well as the anticipated increase in patient volume due to this generational and population aging, automation will be vital to creating efficiencies in processes and enabling our workforce to reach a farther volume of patients. When you think about automation as it relates to clinical mobility, it's all about what we just talked about here and reducing breaks in process and stepping away, but being able to send information in real time. So whether that's automated documentation based off of scan, mobile data entry, or voice processing, it's being able to receive that information communicate lab results. It's about being able to reduce manual processes. There are workflows in healthcare that require phone calls, manual data entry, some paper and pen in different areas as it relates to automation and supply chain as we're talking. It's about time spent manually walking or finding different technologies where they are having to go into physical environments, which creates a increasing challenge as more and more of our workforce is moving into remote tasks that require physically going to touch or find or review paper and pen documentation not only create challenges in in a strained workforce but they also create challenges in our efforts to utilize data to drive more and more of that intelligent automation of the future and something to Thinking back to that 2017 study versus now, the importance of mobility has really come into play and we're seeing that it looks different than it used to look. It used to be that a lot of people used their own devices um, and things like that. And, And that's truly not the way things are anymore. Hospitals, healthcare facilities are providing their clinicians with their own devices. That's important for a number of reasons. Why should they be looking at an enterprise kind of hardware device similar to what Zebra might have? I think about this conversation we're having here, just the dynamics in healthcare and patient care delivery, they're ever evolving, they're changing, and the stakes are becoming higher. The rigors of the healthcare environment, the 24-7 uptime, uh, the in- increased stringent cleaning protocols, the diverse workforce needs depending on where the roles or departments within the health system, and the criticality of the information shared require purpose-built tools. Technology at the point of the care absolutely must fit seamlessly into the workflows in which it's intended to support to be effective. So solutions in the hands of our healthcare workers must be durable, They must support their dedicated workflows, and they must be able to be managed with that minimal touch and intervention. So that aligns with the IT side. And why does that matter? Is the technologies in the hands of our clinicians must work at all times in order for them to not only be effective, but to actually support the protocols that they've been designed to deliver on that are critical to patient safety. If a solution doesn't work as it's intended or anticipated by an end user in healthcare, it opens up a gap. And I addressed this a little bit earlier, but I think it, I want to reinforce it. When you open up a gap with technology as it relates to performance in healthcare, it means a clinician has to utilize a manual process. And that goes directly against the safety protocols. So making investments in an enterprise grade solution that ease IT management burden, but also can withstand the rigors of the environment, allowing clinicians to use them regardless of the care environment in which they're working are critical to technology investments in this space. I love that you mentioned safety and security. That's something that I think about a lot in healthcare 
And one of the reasons that it is so vital to have those enterprise devices that really fit into the plan like you were speaking about before, there is nothing that needs to be protected more than patient data. I mean, really having a device that is secure, that can be managed mobily like you were speaking to from the IT perspective, those are so important and it's only going to become more important. So I definitely think that that is something we're going to see more of. Uh, while we are here where we're talking about things we think we might see, I'm interested, there are a lot of predictions for the future in the report that you guys outline. What are like the top three or four that you think are coming down the line that we can expect for the future of mobility in healthcare? I think we started this conversation and talking about the challenge of the crystal ball of the future and what's, it, what's ahead. But in our study, we spent time looking at this and we really are, as, a, as health system providers globally, we're anticipating a pivotal shift in care delivery models in the next five years. The healthcare systems that we interact today will look very different within five years. Technologies such as telehealth, patient health tracking, so constant continuous monitoring, real-time health platforms, and AI are all technology trends that we've noted in our study. And as solution providers in the space are monitoring it and supporting with significant focus because they're going to play critical roles in enhancing the visibility we've talked about here today to the patient needs regardless of where they're being provided care, whether it's in the four walls of the hospital or beyond, which enables our clinicians to have a further reach and thinking about trends moving forward with staffing shortages, increased patient demands, that will be critical. And additionally, all of those will play significant roles in accelerating the adoption of decision support tools. Again, better enabling our workforce to provide safe, effective care to our growing patient population. I believe that telehealth makes healthcare so accessible. When you're not just administering care within the four walls, I think it's a really interesting and cool trend that we're going to see more of, as we noted before. So definitely really interesting predictions for the future. Of course, there are many more. You can take a look at those in the report. As we wrap up today, Ricky, I'm just thinking, what are three takeaways that those listening can start to work on today? If they're going to take three things away and they want to go ahead and get started right now after finishing this episode, what would be those three things? Oh, man, you're going to limit me to three. It's hard <laughs> to pick those three. Three that come to mind. First and foremost, create connectivity that enables swift and timely communication amongst clinicians. Specifically, think about connectivity connectivity and communication around facilitating communication at critical junctures in the patient journey. And one of the most notable there, and you'll see it in our study, is about critical test results and taking management of those lab results, which is just vital to diagnosis, treatment, and ongoing patient flow workflows, which is a prioritized topic of discussions with many of our healthcare customers. Additionally, as you're looking at connectivity, a second thing would to be enhanced clinician and patient communication. My first one was connecting clinicians to one another and connecting clinicians to information. Adding the patient in the communication strategy furthers our reach and development on all of these topics we've discussed here today and enabling reach regardless of where the patient is, whether in the four walls or in the community. And lastly, continuing to optimize supply chain. We've discussed it time and time again here about the value of connecting the poison of care to supply chain and enabling visibility to real-time need of critical patient care delivery equipment, enabling our clinicians to provide care in a less disruptive manner, which results in safer, more effective workflows and care delivery strategies. Supply chain optimization is 100% something that I think across all industries we are going to see as a trend, especially as we are currently dealing with so many shortages and other issues. It's going to just become more and more prevalent to see that supply chain optimization. So totally spot on there, Ricky. That is our time for today. Thank you so much for joining me, Ricky. A big thank you to Zebra Technology. For those of you who are listening, make sure that you subscribe while you're here. You can subscribe on any of the podcasts podcast 
listening apps, Spotify, Apple Podcast, Google Podcast, any of those places, as well as at rfsmart.com slash on par. We have an email subscription there that you can check out as well. As I mentioned before, I'm going to leave this resource linked for you as well as a link to the RFID podcast that we did with Zebra earlier this year over on our other podcast. I just think it's really interesting and very relevant regardless of industry. So make sure you check that out as well. Ricky, thanks so much for being here. And guys, we'll see you guys again soon. Thanks.